is the all new Masterbuilt XT the smoker you should be considering? Well, my personal preference is to play with the fire on something like a traditional stick burning offset. I recognize in many ways, that makes me a bit of a dinosaur. Earlier this year, I competed at Memphis in May with other like-minded enthusiasts. When I talk to friends, family, neighbors, most people don't even know what Memphis in May is, let alone have zero desire to spend all day and or all night tending to the fire themselves. Instead, they wanna skip right to the good part. And I can't blame you because if you can get amazing barbecue and take advantage of modern day convenience features like the XT promises to bridge and make possible, it's no wonder grills like this are at the top of the shopping list for most normal people. So to find out if Masterbuilt's new premium gravity smoker, the XT is right for you, I'm doing a first look to go over everything that's new and different over this model versus any of the other gravity series I've tested before. Let's get into it. If you've uh, been around the channel before, you may know that there is no love lost between myself and Pellet Grill. So it may seem strange that I'm gonna actually start with a big thank you, a shout out to Pellet Grills, because unlike myself, who is more than happy to spend all day and night playing with my fire, I know this is not the norm for many people. And they introduced a bunch of great things. So we're gonna call this almost smoker eras, the first generation. And what Pellet Grills solved is a couple things. First, the fuel. No longer do we need to be standing by and adding sticks to our fire every 40 to 60 minutes. They also have fans and controllers to sort of move smoke around and make sure things are cooking evenly in all parts of your smoker. And they later became equipped with not just a fan controller, but also like the XT behind me, a PID controller, which is geek code for smart enough to figure out that today is a cool day versus in the middle of summer where it's a hot day that it needs to make some adjustments to achieve the same temperature that you might be going after. They also bridge the gap between old school analog technology or adding sticks to modern day technology and creature comfort like smartphone apps so the completely uninitiated can open up their app pick a recipe get the instructions that you need to execute a perfect cook and with no prior experience turn out something pretty remarkable so that we all have to thank pellet grills for their part in helping make a hobby that i absolutely love more accessible to more people so so far things sound pretty good for team pellet but this is the end of the road. This is where the wheels come off the cart, so to speak. Earlier this year, I did a series where I traveled around the nation and met families who reached out to say, James, can you come help rescue my barbecue? It's called Backyard Barbecue Rescue. And the number one complaint that I ran into was from pellet grill owners. The common complaints are things like, I can't achieve high temperatures. So beyond 400, 450 degrees can be a stretch for most pellet grills on the market. So I'm not able to get something like a good sear, but it's actually smoke and or lack of smoke uh, was the number one complaint shared by all these different families that I met traveling the country. And this is what I think is the catalyst for a second generation of automatic smoke controllers, where we still take all those great benefits of automatic temperature control, app integration uh, for those that want to use their smartphone when grilling, but tackle the problem of the fuel and or lack of flavor associated with it. And they're not alone. This actually aligns with tests that I've done in my own backyard using things like this wood humidity meter in order to understand the humidity in different levels of wood. So for example, a naturally seasoned wood that I'm using in my stick burner offset might be between a 10 to a 20% uh, wood humidity level. This is going to burn nice and clean, but at the same time, giving us the natural flavor of that wood. Something like kiln dried wood chips or chunks are often in that three to 5% range. So they burn very quickly, almost like paper, but they don't provide near as much flavor as the full wood split does. And it gets even worse when you dip down into compressed sawdust, which is wood pellets. These, I sometimes even have a struggle getting the wood meter to even read a reading. So we are in the zero to 3% wood humidity level reading. And all that, I don't mean to geek out here on the humidity levels uh, too much of wood. I have a digital resource down below if you want to understand more. Particularly, it was written for Komodo users how to get great smoke. But all of that to say in English that fuel is flavor, 
and pellets out of all the different smoking options pack the least amount of flavor when you want to create great barbecue at home. So if I'm such a big fan of the do-it-yourself model and immediately get my nose up at the thought of electricity fans and controllers, why is it that I have a bit of a soft spot for the Gravity Series smokers? And this all comes down to previous tests. I've been remarkably impressed with the live fires that I've turned out amazing ribs, pork shoulders, or even full briskets, taking the advantage of the modern day technology with a live fire. Is this offset quality? No. Is it close enough to have me seriously considering if it's really worth all the incremental effort needed to put in to pull off the same result on a stick burner? At times, not gonna lie, I found myself questioning my purest mentality. I've pitted the predecessor to this grill, which is still available, the Masterbuilt 1050, against my affordable backyard offset at the time, which was an Oklahoma Joe's uh, Highland offset smoker, or YouTube's favorite pellet grill, the Camp Chef Woodwind. And hands down, particularly against any pellet grill, the Masterbuilt with a live fire easily dispatched anything that I did a head-to-head -head taste test comparison. I've received this grill at no cost. However, I do not get a commission tied to any sale of the grill. I do not unlock any financial incentives from Kamado Joe, Masterbuilt, Middleby, or any parent or affiliate organization as part of the company. And Masterbuilt does not get to see, modify this video in advance or have any input on the outcome of this video, any other video that I do, including any test or review. My tests and reviews outcomes are not for sale. Never have been, aren't now, and never will be. So now that we got the disclosure out of the way so you know exactly any potential uh, bias that can be coming through, let's get into what's new about the XT. With that out of the way, I'm excited to find out what Masterbuilt's newest gravity model, the XT, can do. So to start, let's actually compare what's similar to the last Masterbuilt Gravity Series smoker that I tested, the 1050, as there's a couple similarities, but then a whole bunch of good stuff, what's new? So starting with what's the same or similar between the two, first we have, they are both digitally controlled, charcoal grills with a smartphone app as well as a controller panel on the side of the grill. Both plus or minus an inch here or there are almost identical exterior dimensions and as you can see behind me and on the side have stainless steel work shelves on the front and the side so that we can uh, have an accessible area getting food on and off of the grill. And last but not least, uh, as you see behind me, they both have a charcoal hopper on the side that uses gravity to supply the fuel needed for our cook. Now let's get into the good stuff. What's new and unique about the XT or extra tough model. First, as I mentioned, despite being almost identical in every dimension to the 1050, the weight is way up. So if extra tough means more durable features and components, first is heavy duty materials and finishes. And the minute I started unboxing this grill, this was evident. This thing is a beast. Now, anytime you see a box where things are nicely contained, it's a miracle. Somehow it all fits together. And then you end up with something this substantial behind me. That does take some time to assembly. So I'm not gonna lie, there is a lot of parts to put together. And just like other Masterbuilt models that I put together, my assembly time here was approaching three hours. Second, this grill has a U-shaped manifold. So rather than a central heat uh, deflector plate uh, coming into the bottom of grills like the Auto Ignite or the 1050 uh, that I've tested before, the U-shaped manifold helps distribute heat more evenly as well as make extracting grease a much simpler process. And I can't wait to actually fire that up and put it through its paces, but it looks and feels significantly tough compared to many other internal deflector plates and manifolds that I've played with on grills that I've assembled over the years. Third is it's got a dual wall insulation as well as a mesh gasket. So this is gonna improve a couple things. First is efficiency. Now, 
there is such a thing as too efficient, but I'm not concerned in a grill this size and with a side mounted uh, charcoal hopper that this will be a, an issue, but that'll be something to look for when we actually get into tests. Not only is it going to improve efficiency, the real benefit here is retaining moisture. This is probably the biggest issue for people that are cooking on a pellet grill or a propane grill that is a leaky bucket in terms of its airflow design is that the heat and more importantly, the moisture in your food is being drawn out of the grill. So that's why something like a chicken breast on a pellet grill or a gas grill often can be so dry compared to something what I'm cooking on most often like a Kamado style grill, which are renowned for their uh, seal and energy efficiency, which retains a lot of moisture. And the dual wall insulation and the mesh gasket on the XT should, in theory, give us some of the same benefits in terms of being able to retain more moisture, which means better food. The XT also comes equipped with stainless steel cooking grates on all four levels, count them, and that in part is what helps ramp up the cooking capacity. So we've gone to just over 1,200 square inches, which is 20% more interior cooking volume available to us, despite very similar dimensions compared to the 1050, if you're cross-shopping the two of those smokers. Sticking with the 20%, the hopper also has 20% more capacity. So we gain an extra two pounds of lump or charcoal briquettes so that we can extend our cook times without running out of fuel. We also have a larger operating temperature range dipping down into the 180 degree Fahrenheit up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit useful operating range, which has my mind thinking about holding something like a brisket that we've just smoked in the XT versus needing a dedicated holding oven. Let me know down in the comments if you think brisket should be the first thing that we cook and we test if that feature can maintain a live fire in and around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can see just behind me here, we have an integrated lever for extinguishing our fire. So no longer do you need the two removable plates, something like my 1050 had, it is a built-in heavy duty unit. Speaking of built-in, we also have an integrated drip tray that is much easier to remove than any previous model that I've tested. And before I forget, I'll show you inside the firebox here, the hopper, uh, that there's actually now the inclusion of ceramic fire bricks to help again, improve not only the efficiency, but as also a layer protecting any of those electronic components from the fire that we are burning at the bottom of the hopper. The aftermarket uh, industry has gone crazy creating mods and accessories for grills like the Master Belt Gravity as well as a whole host of others. But out of the box, this is now something that is included with no modification needed. So really excited to see features like that being built in right from the factory. We also have the ability to support four probes and two are included right out of the box. So we can track along with our cook included on what you see here, the all new control panel. So while other Gravity Series do have a digital control panel, this is gonna give us smart capabilities like I saw first on Komodo Joe's Connected Joe, where we get graphing capabilities right on the outside. So if we don't have our smartphone handy, we can see exactly what's going on with the ambient temperatures in our grill, as well as whatever we're smoking and get all the information that we need on a quick and easy to read digital display on the outside of our grill. And last but not least, sticking with the extra tough, Masterbuilt is putting their money where their mouth is. Warranty is tripled up from one year to three years on the XT. So for me, my immediate next step is the break in burn and seasoning, but I wanna hear from you in the comments down below what you'd like to see me cook. For the break and burn, I've just added a fire starter, some charcoal, started that fire starter and set my grill temperature to 250 degrees for the first hour. I'll be bumping it up between 350 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, adding some oil, I'll put all the details uh, on the screen versus reciting them from memory. But uh, once the grill is completely seasoned and ready to go, we'll be ready to dive in for our first cook. So what are you thinking? Ribs, brisket, pork, anything like that? Let me know down in the comments. And I'm also a little bit curious. I mentioned my nemesis. I mean, my friend and former neighbor, uh, Aaron, who has that pellet grill. I'm half inclined to load this up on a trailer, take it over and maybe even do a bit of a head to head and see if we are able to run over yet another pellet uh, customer into the full benefits of better fuel 
for flavor. So that's uh, maybe some options for what's in store with the Gravity XT. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see beyond today's first look and initial impressions uh, of the XT Gravity. That's it for today. I'm James from Smoked Dad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.